I heard what they said. And this is why you need to send someone from outside of Washington to Washington. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I need, I feel like I need a Washington to English dictionary converter, right? I mean, I heard what they both said. I saw it on the video. And the fact is, this is what makes a difference when you're a governor. You can change your mind. Ted could change his mind. Marco could change his mind. It's perfectly legal in this country to change your mind. But when you're a governor, you have to admit it. You can't hide behind parliamentary tricks. That's the difference, and that's the kind of leader we need in the White House. Stop the Washington bull, and let's get things done. That was New Jersey Governor Chris Christie suggesting the White House needs someone like, say, a state executive instead of a Washington lawmaker. Joining me now, Bill Burton, who's a former White House Deputy Press Secretary for President Obama, and Mark Thiessen, who's a former Chief Speechwriter for President George W. Bush and a Fox News contributor. Good to see you both. Good to see you, Megan. What would you think? It was a good debate. It was substantive. I think that there was a real conversation that you haven't seen in the other debates because of you-know-who not being there. Uh, but why, why are people not saying Donald Trump's name tonight? <laughs> like, oh, well, I don't mind saying was there Donald Trump was yeah. not there. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think that tonight you're right before the caucuses. People are looking at how the candidates are feeling, and I think you got a real sense of who felt like they were doing well and who felt like they're not doing that well. What did you think, Mark? Uh, I thought it was amazing. This was, the, this was the debate, the campaign we were supposed to have before Donald Trump jumped into the race and upended everything. This was the, uh, you know, Rand Paul said before the debate that the IQ level was going to go up. It did. I mean, you know, we, did, we weren't debating Muslim bans and, and an alliance with Vladimir Putin. We were actually debating serious substantive issues that might actually, actually happen. If somebody was elected, that's a fascinating that was a observation. Fascinating because honestly, we had, as I mentioned before, our two outlines. Because up until the last minute, it's, you know, some people were saying he might show up. Right. So you got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it would have looked very different, and the issues we discussed would have felt very different if he had been there, just because of the issues he's yeah. injected into the campaign. Very much so. You think it in order to the Republicans' benefit, though? Is that I, what I think it did absolutely, and I, look, I mean, we'll find out. You know, the, the big winner or loser tonight is Donald Trump. We just don't know which one yet. We'll find out on Monday. Uh, if he pulls off a win in Iowa, then he'll be a political genius for skipping this debate. If he what loses is narrowly, because there's one third of the voters uh, in this state have still still might change their mind. You look at F Frank's focus group, and people are changing their positions yeah. right there in front of our very eyes. So Donald Trump lost. He skipped the last job interview. Uh, and that well, can always hurt him. What's your experience, Bill? Because you've been part of a team that actually got a president elected <laughs> by, by coming through Iowa, and this is a huge state for you guys. You won it. I mean, in, in the end, I, we're hearing talk about maybe Huckabee surging, mm -hmm. talk of Carson surging, and those guys are definitely taken from Cruz. Well, you know, it's funny about Huckabee. I was in the back, we were watching, we had the split screen. We were just seeing what was going on in the Trump rally, but listening to the debate. And Huckabee was up on stage with Donald Trump at the same time his attack ad on Trump was running in the break of the debate, which is an Politics amazing thing is to watch. The weirdest it is the weirdest ever. thing. It's the weirdest thing ever. And I've been on the winning side of the Iowa caucus and the losing side. And they feel vastly different I'll from bet. the days leading up. I remember in 2004 working for Dick Gephardt. Walking into an event the days before Iowa, he gave me a hug and he said, thank you for your help. And I was like, you know what, that's nice. But then it was like, wait, you don't hug your staff and thank them right before you think your campaign's <laughs> going to go on. But with Obama in those last days, you know, the one candidate who exuded the kind of confidence that Obama had in the final days before Iowa, oddly, was Jeb Bush. I think Jeb tonight. Bush, you yeah, You think he's tonight, got some good news he, coming his I way? I think that he felt good. He felt like he had nothing to lose. And plus, his bully wasn't on stage pushing him around. Mm -hmm. So I think that he was open to... To having he a had a couple good lines, too. He had a couple good lines at yeah. Jeb Bush. I mean, he, he definitely seemed a little looser tonight. And Crowdhammer suggested he didn't come right out and say he, he suggested he might have maybe almost won it. I think that's probably a slight exaggeration. That's a bridge too far. Well, no, I, th <laughs> I think right. but he, but, but, think but, won but, it. But I think, I think who, who I think won it, honestly, is Marco Rubio. Uh, I think that Rubio, number one, I think we saw the reason why, according to NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, Rubio has gone in the last month from 9% support to 18%. He's doubled his support in Iowa. And the reason is he was, he ignored Donald Trump. He mostly ignored the other candidates unless he was attacked, passed up opportunities to attack Christie and others. And he relentlessly he went after Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. I think his best moment was when he said that Hillary Clinton, uh, that uh, if she's elected president, she may be the first president to pardon herself. Right. You know, <laughs> right. and he just went Sanders after them. And then he, of Sweden was maybe that, that it was a part of the same <laughs> same line there. But it was he just relentlessly went after them. He, he said twice Hillary Clinton is going to appoint Barack Obama to the Supreme Court, which is like the most horrific thought for a, for a conservative Republican. I know not for you, but for the, most of the people in this building. <laughs> and, you know, so I th and then he said, when I'm president, this is what I'm going to do. And so I think that really resonated with voters. Well, the moved. other thing about Rubio is that, that exchange we had on, you know, his past positions on immigration. Um, 
that that is what a core part of the GOP base feels when they look at Marco Rubio. You said one thing and you did another and you were for amnesty. But in the room, everyone applauded. And there's this other huge section of the GOP that wants to see immigration reform. And that's the that's the bus that Marco Rubio was on back in 2013. And, and now, you know, anyway. Well, stop, you know what's interesting about is, that is like, he, made this, he made the same mistake that he did in the first debate with you when you questioned him on abortion. And he stopped you and he said, no, no, actually, I'm the more conservative, less electable position. He did the same thing here on immigration. I think that that exchange is going to come back to haunt him should he be the nominee. But Great to see you both. It's over between us. All right. <laughs> All right.